Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead here at Fishbowl Solutions. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar as we discuss how to drive more customer, company, and product insights with Google Cloud Search. So happy to be joined by our partner, Google, and Brad Siegel, as well as my colleague, Kim Negard. I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves quickly. Brad, why don't you start? Sure. Hi, this is Brad Sego. I'm a global sales manager for Google Cloud based in uh, Dallas, Texas. And I'm Kim Negard, product manager for Enterprise Search here at Fishbowl Solutions. Brad and Kim are actually going to have different sections today. Brad will start off and then Kim will go second. And just want to kind of level set here before we get started in terms of how to ask questions and some of the housekeeping items. First of all, if you do have a question during the webinar, you can use the Zoom interface to ask that question. There's a little Q&A applet or icon that you can click on. You can type your question in there. And then as we monitor those, those questions, we'll be able to answer them at the end. So go ahead and submit those at any time during the presentation. Also, the presentation is being recorded. So anyone that registered will be receiving a link to the recording within one to two days after today's presentation. So just to kind of go over a quick agenda of why we're here today, why we wanted to talk about this topic, why did we want to you know, share with you how Google Cloud Search is bringing more of those insights and innovation to enterprise search across an organization, is that I think everyone realizes that today search is still a problem within the enterprise. Um, ineffective search systems can cause a lot of disruption and problems as knowledge workers like you and me are, are just looking to find information to do our job. So we'll touch on some of those some of those problems that enterprises are still facing. And then Brad will get into really how Google Cloud Search is really solving those problems for the business and what that for the business actually means. Kim will then talk about and show really what's possible from, a art, from an art of the possible perspective when it comes to leveraging Google Cloud Search, working with your partner Fishbowl, you know, longstanding Google partner, to not only utilize connectors to information sources like Oracle Web Center or PTC Windchill and other systems, but really providing that search experience that you're looking for in your organization to again drive more of those customer product, and other insights that you're looking for within your organization. And with Google's long-term long success in this area, there's a lot of customers that, have already, that are already succeeding with Google Cloud Search implementations, and we'll share just a few, with the, a few of those with you today. But with that, I am now going to turn it over to Brad. Great. Thank you, Jason. All right. So, First of all, appreciate uh, Fishbowl giving me the time to, to speak to all of you today. We're really excited to, to work with them. A little bit about the Fishbowl uh, Google relationship. It's been a long uh, time, very successful relationship in a number of uh, very large enterprise accounts as well as uh, small to medium businesses. Um, so we've got an extensive uh, uh, working relationship and really rely on each other for, uh, for constant expertise um, in the areas that, that Fishbowl's focused on. So that being said, I just want to run um, kind of through, you know, what differentiates uh, Google from the other solutions out there in the market. And as Jason alluded to, you can ask questions, which we can circle back and answer as we go through this. But uh, just a little bit about my background that'll help give you some context when I present this. I am from an enterprise sales background. I've also worked for a uh, number of enterprise companies. So when I present this, I try to put myself in your seat and try to look at it from a company standpoint. What have I dealt with? What struggles have I had in my career in finding data and content and working and collaborating with others in my company? So we understand where you're coming from and, and that's how I view this is I'm trying to look at it from your perspective. So this first slide, uh, many of you have probably seen this. Where I find that this resonates most clearly is that uh, is the far right, the 38% in yellow. 38% of time is spent unsuccessfully searching and recreating content by employees in most companies. And that's because there's just not the right way to find uh, content or effective ways to find content with the spread that we now have across uh, the business. 
what you, people usually do is they end up picking up a phone, uh, you know, dialing their coworker or emailing their coworker, messaging their coworker, asking them, hey, where did uh, you know, where'd that document go? Where is that hiding? Um, can you send me this? Can you send me that? So there's a better way, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So what's changed here is the way that content is now, um, you know, proliferating in, in the enterprise. So we've gone from this on-prem uh, situation where there was still, you know, a lot of content constantly being added, but now we've, it's become even more complex because you've got content that can reside on-prem, you've got content that can reside in the cloud um, across a litany of different applications from like, as we're gonna touch on today, um, PTC Windshell, you know, to Slack, to Jive, to Salesforce, um, to your standard file shares, um, databases. Um, you know, I haven't met a customer yet that doesn't seem to have a, a SharePoint farm, it seems, uh, that's gotten out of control. So the content is just booming. So if you look at your personal life, I hope that each of you and every one of you is familiar with Google. And you know as a company that you've arrived when your company name becomes a verb. So just like Kleenex, and for those of us that live in my part of the country, when we ask for a Coke, that's a soft drink. When people ask you to search for something, they say, just Google it. So that's become a part of our vernacular for our personal lives, and it's something we do on a daily basis when we're looking for content for ourselves, for our kids, for our uh, significant others. Um, but then we go to work, and we struggle to find content. So shouldn't it be easier than that? Shouldn't you be able to go look for that information in Windchill, that information in Oracle, Salesforce, Slack, anywhere, you know, on-prem, in the cloud? Well, you can. You can just Google it in your business lives as well. And oh, by the way, this, um, you know, Google Cloud Search is actually supported and runs on the same infrastructure that supports our Google Web Search and all of our countless solutions across the globe. So this is a tried and true platform that is global in nature, uh, has incredible redundancy and um, you know immense uptime, uh, incredible uptime. So this is what we bank our business on, and we're banking uh, you know the support for you on that as well. So what do we mean by you know cloud search um, for work or for business or for the enterprise? Well, it means that we quickly, easily, and securely find information across your business. So we want to have um, all of your data available. We want the same kind of robust, uh, scalable, and powerful infrastructure to support that. And we want to leverage our investments in other parts of the company, like in machine learning and AI, to support search. And we don't want to just provide that um, like we do on the internet, where anybody can find anything. In the business, it's important that we have the privacy and security that meets your business needs. And we'll touch on that uh, a little bit. But to take this to the next level, when we talk about what does that mean for business, well, first of all, you've got to look at user context. Who's the, you know, who's the requester for the information? What are the access privileges they have? Where are they located? What's their role? What's their search history? Um, we want to understand if somebody's in Japan, then they more than likely want their content to first come from Japan and then mainly, and then probably uh, secondarily come from the U.S., um, if somebody is an engineer looking for content, then it's going to be much more important that they start in their data sources than the overall data sources that, say, somebody in marketing might start in. So user context is really where we start. Then the next thing is company context. So if you're a company in a specific marketplace, it's important that we understand synonyms, spellings that might be specific to your, uh, to your business, um, acronyms that you may use. Um, and then also ontologies. For many uh, industries, there's ontologies specific to industries that uh, can be quite complex. We can ingest uh, third-party ontologies uh, into Google Cloud Search and make it a part of uh, Google Cloud Search so that everything that you're looking for has an understanding based on your industry and, and uh, your business. The last thing really is the application context. So relevance delivered in the context of the application. As I mentioned, if I'm in marketing and I'm looking for um, you know, particular information, that's very different than I'm in, if I'm in engineering creating uh, a document. Lead time in engineering may be lead time to go to market. Lead a lead in, um, in Salesforce, in a you know, customer support rep, means you know, 
I've got an opportunity that I need to dig into. So we need to understand the application context and then also understand, you know, the host application, what it's doing so that we provide contextual relevance. So when we look at what that means, it really is uh, the underlying technology that we utilize is natural language queries. And I try to explain it this way. If I turn to my coworker, say Bob, and I said, hey, Bob, what are your favorite Tom Hanks action movies? Well, Bob automatically knows what I'm talking about. He understands that, hey, the actor is Tom Hanks, and I'm talking specifically about action movies instead of comedies or dramas. Um, well, Google's ability in natural language processing is unparalleled. And the reason I can say that is because we've had years to work on this in uh, you know, Google.com on regular search. So we apply that same natural language understanding, query understanding, to Google Cloud Search. So when we mention Tom Hanks action movies, when we type that into the search box, we understand that you're looking for the actor, you're looking for the genre, and you're looking for the object. This could be the same thing as turning and asking Bob or asking Google for, hey, can I have that uh, revenue report of Q4 of 2018 for uh, EMEA? We understand what that means, that that's very different than asking for a current revenue report for the central region in the United States. So we bring that to the table, the same understanding that you would have in talking to a coworker we want to have that same type of interaction uh, with Google search. So then another important point that we really leverage uh, that comes from Google.com is this notion of related concepts. So when I go out there and I look for something, um, in this case, Advil, uh, Google, we leverage what we've learned from Google.com, and that is that there's very many different related concepts that mean the same thing as Advil. So ibuprofen, if I type in headache, I'm probably looking for pain relief, uh, pain relievers, pain. So all of these concepts are related, but you don't have to go and tell your search engine that they are. We just understand that because of Google.com and the technology that we're leveraging there. So I'll give you an ex a tr real world example. I was talking to a large construction company and they deal with uh, all areas of the globe and they were saying how they're having a lot of difficulty because they would search for dry, uh, um, gosh, now I've gone completely blank, sheetrock, uh, which some areas refer to as drywall. Um, there are some areas that uh, refer to it in a number of different names. And they did not uh, seem to have the right request coming or the right queries coming back from request and we're constantly having to go in and adjust for that themselves. Um, Google understands, based on our knowledge of Google.com, we understand that drywall, sheetrock, um, uh, I think fiberboard is another word that they use in some parts, but all of that is interrelated, and that all essentially means the same thing. So then, you know, why Google Cloud Search? Um, I'm gonna take a minute and just really dive into this. Uh, you know, line by line, there's really, these are the differentiators that are most important. And then I'll turn this over to Kim to actually get into the meat of it. But the first thing is advanced uh, relevance and ranking. So machine learning is really what's driving most of search today. Um, meaning that the more we understand, the more ingestion of information that we have within a business, um, the more that the machine learning can be applied. And just to let everybody know, when we ingest your data, the only thing we're storing actually in the cloud is the index itself. It's not the actual data, uh, the actual documents or the actual uh, content. But in ingesting that, we understand we're able to leverage content and complex information out of that. That allows us, um, we've seen with our relevance and ranking, to increase relevance and ranking in some cases 20 plus percent over um, our prior solution. So that's very important as we continue to strive to deliver the right results in your business, just like we do in your personal life. So then natural language process, we touched on that. We really want the interface to be just like you have with google.com. And in fact, um, there's a microphone that you can click on. You can ask Google, you can ask Google search, just like you do if you happen to use it on your phone with Assistant or happen to use it in your home uh, with one of our home devices. 
So Google really understands just how you talk and how you ask questions and how you strive to uh, find information. And this is no matter whether you live in the United States or you reside in another part of the globe. Then that related rankings that I talked about, that's really valuable when you start talking about all of the different ways that people refer to content around the globe. As I mentioned, uh, you know, there's a number of different things that, that uh, like drywall and sheetrock can be referred to. But there's a litany of different items that if you start looking at just between the United States and the UK, um, there's, there's a number of uh, different things. Nappies over here, uh, most people would refer to napkins. Over in Europe, that's a, a diaper for your baby. So um, that's just one kind of random example. Then ingestion at scale. In taking this product to the cloud, and taking Google search to the cloud, we can ingest at scale. We can ingest information that in the past maybe took weeks to ingest. We can ingest in, in hours to days. Uh, depending on the complexity and the uh, storage requirements of the information. So we're able to ingest and grow with you at a very quick rate and also ingest very quickly of uh, the information. But the other thing that we can do is ingestion. At the time of ingestion, we can apply um, some really interesting uh, APIs that we have available through the broader Google Cloud footprint. So by those APIs, I mean, uh, there's a vision API, so we can ingest pictures, um, we can ingest drawings, uh, we can ingest any type of visual content and actually make um, an, an understanding of that that you can search. So we can even go as far as to take a video and interpret what's in that video. Um, we can take pictures uh, and you could search for, show me a picture of someone smiling, and it will do that. So we have a complex um, ability to leverage um, you know, the visual API to ingest and understand your information. And that could be documents for you know, manufacturing, for field workers, uh, repairing um, you know, equipment in the field. It can be a number of different things. Another key important point here is the fact that this is a managed service. It runs in the cloud. It's sitting on Google's infrastructure. We're taking care of ramping it up, helping you with uh, any upgrades. There's no downtime that you'll ever see. And if you, if you call Fishbowl and say, hey, Fishbowl, you've done such a fantastic job with this initial uh, implementation that we now want to expand to a completely different area of the business, we can ramp you up and grow that area very quickly. There's no need to go and add more hardware. There's no need to uh, you know, go through a lot of the steps that you would go through in the past to actually build out your um, search infrastructure. And then language support, I touched on this a minute ago, just kind of an analogy, but if you think about Google, you think about that we're a global company. So we support over 100 plus languages. Um, we're actually considered as good as a human in I think 20 plus languages now. So if you've got a global business and you want customers or you have uh, employees from around the world, then we can present uh, based on um, exactly where they're coming from and what the content in their native language should be in. Um, now, if the content's not in the native language, we're not going to translate that, obviously, on the fly, but we are going to allow them to work in their native la language. And then simplicity at scale, I already touched on this, but grow in the cloud. In the cloud, you've got the ability to add content, delete content, um, you know, add capacity, um, from a documentation standpoint, um, and always leverage the speed. As we get faster, you get faster. So hopefully that's a good, uh, good understanding. If you've got questions, by all means, please post them. And I'm actually finishing a little bit earlier than I had planned, so we'll probably have a little bit of time for questions. But with that, I will turn it over to Kim if you're ready to go, Kim. Sounds good, thanks so much, Brad. Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate that introduction, Brad. Hopefully that gives all of you um, a little bit better idea of what Google Cloud Search is um, and really how it applies to some of the things that Google does so well on the public web and makes them available in the enterprise. So what I'm going to share now is um, a little bit about where Fishbowl fits into that mix and ways that we've seen um, Cloud Search be applied to various business use cases. So for those of you who aren't aware, um, Jason and Brad alluded to this a little bit. We have been a Google partner now for nearly 10 years. 
um, working on specifically search implementations and integrations. Um, so prior to cloud search, we worked many years with the GSA, um, and judging by it, I know some of the names I recognize on the call, um, many of you use either Oracle, specifically Web Center Content or Web Center Portal, or PGC One Shell as um, you know important data sources within your uh, ecosystem. Um, those are also two other companies that we work very closely with on the content management side, and that created natural um, segues to integrate. Oracle and PTC, as well as many other applications uh, with Cloud Search. Um, so I've been on the team since 2010. So most of the time that we've been working with Search, I've been working um, in this space as well. Um, and Fishbowl itself has been around for 20 years. Specifically, as it pertains to Google Cloud Search, um, we are a full service partner. So we do resale, we can implement and configure Cloud Search, uh, we can create various you know, front end and help with user experience both on the ideation and design side of things, best practices, as well as the actual coding up of the front end itself. Um, we do a lot of work around connectors and integrations, um, so PTC Winchell and, and Web Center being examples of that, but also other types of, you know, connecting to other data sources. Um, and then we can help support and train your staff with, you know, the ongoing maintenance of keeping the solution up and running. And one of the nice things about Cloud Search is because it is hosted, there's not a lot of, you know, technical admin type of, you know, there's nothing to install, those types of things, but, um, you know, from a general training and partnership perspective, that's a service that we provide to our customers. Um, I also wanted just to mention the connectors that we've built. So the, the, the architecture and, um, framework of cloud searches, you have the Google Cloud Index that resides in the Google Cloud, um, and then you can ingest content from various different sources, and um, Brad had a nice graphic early on that showed some of the examples of the kinds of sources that customers may want to ingest. And so in order to do that, um, you typically would use a connector, and there's a, a handful of these that are already built um, and provided by Google as part of the product, and then partners like us can also create um, connectors. So we have a few off-the-shelf connectors that are generally available for customers to use. Um, one is an XML feed connector, so basically taking a structured uh, data representation. Sometimes maybe would think of this as like a site map and ingesting that. Um, Oracle Web Center content, I know I, I recognized a few names um, on the call today who I know use Web Center content. We have a lot of customers um, who use this system. And so being able to easily have a standard way to ingest all the content and metadata coming out of Web Center into Google Cloud Search, and then, of course, PTC Windchill, um, which is typically used for engineering, manufacturing type of data, CAD drawings, parts, um, all of that sort of um, product data. That also we have a standard integration with Google Cloud Search to be able to index all those things. And then the beauty of this is that you can be you can search across all of these different sources from one place and have the Google relevance um, and the quality of those search results. So we'll look at a few ways that that can come into play. So some of the types of examples that we've seen um, commonly where something like Cloud Search can be really relevant and drive a lot of value, one is around product management. So this would be things like being able to see parts, improving information reuse, um, seeing related information, product documentation that may go along with parts, sales history, things like that. Um, another uh, example is around customer service. So if you think about a customer service organization, when someone, when a customer calls in and they need help, you know, the faster that an agent can get them the right answer and ideally, you know, resolve that call in the first try, that both improves customer satisfaction and reduces the cost it takes to operate that call center, to operate that customer service organization. So search can play a huge role and it'll bring a lot of value into bringing together the right information in order to be able to you know, accurately and quickly answer that question. Um, and then the other piece where we see search used a lot is on like an employee intranet or an HR type of a self-service portal. So again, bringing a lot of different departmental information into one place where basically employees can go and, and Google things at work. Uh, and this might mean bringing in social content, this might mean bringing in you know, a variety of internal websites and 
things like SharePoint, Web Center, um, file shares into one place where you have really good relevancy and you can search you know, across these different sources of information. So I'll show a few examples of you know, what you can actually do um, and, and how these might uh, come, come to life in different organizations. So the first example that we will take a look at is around this idea of creating this comprehensive customer search. So this may um, be something that would be used by customer support, um, or this could also apply in on the sales side to people who are you know, reaching out with and managing relationships with customers. Um, in, in many different organizations that we've seen, there's usually information that pertains to a customer, whether that's on the B2B side where a customer is a company, or whether that's on the B2C side where a customer is an individual human. Um, so in this example that I have on the screen now, you could search for North Star, and in, in our um, in demo environment, that is a company, that is a customer. And so in order to be able to go to one place and see data that's coming from a variety of sources, in this case we have you know, a CRM system that contains you know, information about companies, it contains information about the contacts, the people that we work with at those companies. We have tickets, so customers might uh, have an encounter an issue or have a question, and so they reach out to the support, and so they're putting in support tickets. And then we also have documents coming out of document management system. So you have, um, you know, quotes and sales records and product documentation and all of that kind of unstructured document content. And so being able to bring that all together, um, we do that in a couple of different ways. So this first screen that you're looking at you know, looks like maybe what you'd think of if you're envisioning, like, what might it look like to Google something at work? Um, this this uh, interface kind of mimics that look and feel where, you know, in one screen, um, I can search for a keyword, and in this case, it's, you know, the name of a customer that I might be working with, and I can see all the things that we've done um, with that customer. Um, when, when Brad talked about a little bit, you know, what does this mean for business, um, one of the ways that you know something like this is different than how you might Google something on the public web is that the results that you're seeing, those would be filtered based on the permissions that you have. They would be filtered based on the role that you have. And you also have the ability, because one of the differences sometimes with enterprise content as opposed to you know, public website content is with in the enterprise, you often do have uh, potentially, you know, more metadata, more ability to do entity extraction and have a little bit more structure and then use that to enrich. So being able to do things like filtering and um, controlling the experience that way. So this here is, is kind of that, that top level view. The other thing that we've seen um, is being able to then drill into that and use search to really create that almost search-driven application type of experience. So if I click into one of these, if I want to know everything there is to know about this company, I have my document results, but I also have you know, who manages the account, who are the contacts at that company, and if I pop this open into the 360 degree of this view of this customer, I can see again in one place leveraging the power of relevancy and ranking to have this search-powered application, I can get a consolidated view of everything there is to know about this customer. So whether I'm in support or I'm in sales, if I need to go interact, I can really be informed about that complete history. Um, in this particular scenario, we have account information coming from CRM, we have sales information, history, uh, the transactions that we've had with this customer, who you know in our company works with the customer, who at the customer have we interacted with, um, and what is their history as far as you know have they run into any issues? Are they happy? Are there any open cases that we're working on? So being able to aggregate all of that and and use the relevancy of search to see that in a meaningful way. The next example that we'll take a look at is around parts and product data discovery. Uh, so this is another area where we've seen. Um, a lot of a good fit for cloud search. Um, and this particular example comes from Whirlpool Corporation. So I'm sure most of you on the call have heard of them um, and familiar with them as a home appliance leader. Um, so they actually use our wind chill connector to ingest a lot of parts and product data from wind chill. And I'll go ahead and advance this to the next screen and you can see um, a little viewlet showing the um, the Whirlpool Search Pro application. 
Um, so this is aggregating data from a number of different systems at Whirlpool. Um, prior to their use of Cloud Search, they had over 12 different systems, and every system had its own search experience that was you know, unique to, you'd go to Windchill to search Windchill, and you'd go to each different source to search that particular source. And so obviously that had challenges. Um, another challenge we see in particular on the product side a lot of times is that many of those um, different sources, even if even if you can, you know, convince someone to go check in these five different places, the search itself within those various, you know, line of business applications, especially within the product space, oftentimes doesn't have nearly the ability to do quality relevancy as Google. Um, so in, in many cases, you're only searching metadata. It's not looking inside the documents, so you're not getting really the full value of all of that content. Um, in Whirlpool's case, there were several categories that they were, or kind of several challenges that they were looking to address um, by implementing Cloud Search. One of those was to support documents for various programs. So as they're working on, you know, a particular new project, being able to find all the different product specifications, drawings, and parts that all would be related to that particular program or that particular project um, from one place and do so relevantly. Another topic or challenge that they were trying to address was around historical testing and test results. So um, being able to better aggregate lessons learned, um, being able to know, you know, what does a baseline look like and not, you know, repeat the same mistakes. And so making all of that information easily searchable was really important to address that. Um, and then the third kind of topic was around people search and being able to find the right people who have the knowledge you know, specific subject matter expertise, knowledge in various topics, um, and find those people in the organization. And so, as part of this overall project, they were able to improve employee productivity, cut down on the time that it takes to introduce new products, and reduce the duplication of creating new parts when they already had a part that would do. The next one we'll take a look at is related to customer service and customer support. Um, so the first customer 360 example is one um, piece that would kind of fit in along these lines, and this is another example specific to customer support um, in a similar way that we can bring this idea of, you know, a, a holistic view of enterprise information into, uh, you know, a very search-driven type of an application. And so um, in this case, for support tickets, if someone is a support agent and they're trying to solve a ticket, um, one of the things that search can help with is by you know, creating, having that natural language understanding, being able to understand relationships between information and do relevancy, ranked, relevancy ranking and ordering. You can use this both for agents to equip, in this example that you're seeing here, basically everything that, that we know about a ticket and using search to say, if I'm working on you know, this ticket here, 2091, there's a lot of things that the system knows about that one ticket. Well, how do we take all that and use it to find from these other data sources, you know, what are similar tickets? Maybe that has the answer of how to solve the problem that we've already solved in the past. Similar to the Whirlpool example, who are those subject matter experts? And these may be people that are assigned to the ticket, but they may not be. But how do we know based on this ticket's talking about these topics? Well, here are some people in the organization that have expertise in those areas. What about the customer's history? Has this customer had other tickets? Making sure that, I mean, I know it's so frustrating if you call in to get support on something and it seems like they have no idea what you talked about the last time you called in or that this is the third time you've called in about this issue, things like that, and, and creating that, bringing that all together, but not only doing that from one ticketing system, but bringing together people, bringing together knowledge documents, unstructured information, um, whether that's you know from a formal knowledge-based system or whether that's from some kind of a content management system where you have product documentation, FAQs, and being able to have a single place to see all of that and answer questions. A fourth example and um, customer profile that we'll take a look at is from Cox Communications, Cox Enterprises. Um, they are a longtime Fishbowl customer, and um, they had previously used the Google Search Appliance on their Web Center portal-based intranet. So they're using Oracle Web Center portal for their uh, employee intranet, and they have thousands of employees across the country who come, you know, log in every day to this system, and they needed 
um, it to be really easy to find relevant information. Um, and so all that information is stored in Web Center content on the back end, and they're using our connector. Um, so by, you know, integrating with Cloud Search, they were able to get very relevant search results, make it easy for people to find the right information very quickly. Um, and it also provided people search, which was something that they didn't have before. So um, that's kind of been a theme. I think every single one of these examples that I've shared, um, you know, bringing together the ability to find documents and the ability to find the people who have knowledge about the topics within those documents, um, that's really a topic that has come up um, you know, with nearly all of our customers as we look to do these kind of, um, you know, enterprise search implementations. I have a couple examples here of, of the Cox implementation, both of these, you know, showing the the web or the desktop view and the mobile view, making it easy for someone to find answers, you know, regardless of device, being able to find both documents and people that are relevant to, you know, the question that they might have. So before we open it up for questions, I wanted to talk a little bit, um, you know, summarize this, but also a little bit about what's next. So, um, you know, what we've kind of covered today is introducing Google Cloud Search, what it is, kind of what it can do, um, talking a little bit about where Fishbowl fits in that mix. Um, and together, Google and Fishbowl are able to create these search experiences and deliver these kind of solutions. So if you're wondering, um, you know, what might be next, I just wanted to take a minute and, and talk about that. So the way that um, we partner with Google is really to take a mutual fit approach. So if, if you've seen some things today that have kind of piqued your interest and you might be wondering, you know, what's next or does, or does this, would this work in the scenario that I have in mind, um, we'd love to talk to you further. And what we typically do is set up a time to have um, you know, a deeper conversation, and that may may include another demo. Or if there's other things, examples that we want to share, you know, we may do that. Um, but really talk about, you know, what is it that you're trying to accomplish, and then um, help prioritize. You know, are there certain use cases or data sources that we've seen where we think it would have the most impact for you, and and kind of decide together, do we think this is going to be a good fit? And then if the answer is yes. Um, then we would move into the next kind of step, which would be to, to dive a little bit deeper on the technical side and start looking at things like, okay, what are your data sources? What kind of um, structured information do we want to extract? Are there different user personas? What about user experience and security models and you know on-prem data sources and um, connectors and all of those good things? But the, really the first step, the next step, uh, is to talk about fit and to talk about um, the impact that this might have. And, and we love to have those conversations together with our customers and with Google, and we find that that really works well. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions. I think we have a few questions submitted in the chat window. Um, and if you have thought of other questions along the way and haven't had a chance to, to type those in yet, um, please go ahead and do that now. So there's one question about um, handwriting recognition, and um, the question is directed at Brad, and I'm not sure if you have any comments off the top um, as far as, I know I have seen, I've seen some really cool stuff that Google has done around handwriting recognition. Um, I'm not sure, Brad, if you have any other comments to add there as far as uh, how that might integrate with cloud search. Yeah, that's actually a really good question no. that I have not been asked recently. So. Um, I, we would have to investigate that. I don't know that we have um, that particular API available in the cloud um, infrastructure, but if we could get, uh, we've obviously got your contact information. We will dig into that and get you back a response to that. I apologize, I don't know that off the top of my head. There's a question about searching within Oracle Web Center content. If I'm understanding the question right, and feel free to, to comment back if I'm not, but I think the question is whether you can perform Google Cloud searches inside of Web Center content. I'm, I'm assuming that means from the Web Center content interface. Um, so if that is the question, then the answer to that would be yes. Um, and that brings up a really interesting topic about the search interface in general. So I think this question was saying, you know, if I'm in a particular line of business application, in this case Web Center content, 
can I replace or augment the Web Center content search with the Google Cloud search for better relevancy and better results without having to go somewhere else? And the answer to that is yes, and the connector product that Fishbowl has actually has a pre-built, um, you know, pre-made way to do that, so it, it works out of the box. But more broadly, I think that does bring up a good question about where does someone go to do searches, and we haven't we haven't touched on that too much. So, so basically, as as we do this mutual fit evaluation, that's one of the important questions that we ask because typically um, it depends on the the use case where the best place is to have the search experience live. But often that is to have the search experience live within the specific application where users are already doing their job. So we don't want search to feel like yet another place where someone has to go and look for answers when they're already in somewhere else. So we've seen whether that means you know integrating better search directly into Salesforce or better into Web Center or into Windchill. Oftentimes um, the search experience does live and in many cases replace the native search within particular applications. But in certain scenarios, we've also seen um, where rather than, especially in cases where you're searching a, a wide range of applications, um, there are other cases where it does make sense to have what basically becomes Google for the enterprise and you go to, you know, a specific URL or cloudsearch.google.com and you perform the searches there. There is a standard search interface that comes with Cloud Search. That was where I mentioned cloudsearch.google.com. Um, so that's an option or creating, you know, a custom search experience um, and doing so, you know, where you would go either to your intranet or some other kind of search application and search across many data sources. So lots of possibilities there as far as what you can do. Um, and we're really, as part of that discovery process, we try to work with our customers to figure out, you know, what's going to be the smoothest and easiest for your employees and your use case. Hey, Kim, I'll touch on this too. This, this is Brad with Google. So I apologize. I actually didn't go into that. I wasn't sure. Um, whether we want to go that deep, but that's a great question. And as Kim alluded to, you're able to create a portal, like in the case of uh, Whirlpool, and create a portal for a specific user group. But in the context of, say, you've got a, um, a customer account rep that uses Salesforce every day, out of the box with Google Cloud Search, there's an embeddable search widget. What does that mean? Well, it's a little search box that actually can sit inside the application itself so that all their searches are contextual to the application they're in and they're never leaving the application to perform the searches. So that is definitely possible and is used in many cases where it's a very focused uh, search solution. Awesome, thank you, Brad. Well, it looks like we are at the 1245 mark. Um, so we will go ahead and end the broadcast. Um, I think there's a couple more questions that we didn't get to, but we will follow up with those offline. Um, if anyone else thinks of questions after the fact, you know, certainly feel free to reach out to us at Fishbowl and we will be happy to you know, get you the answers that you need. So I really appreciate everyone joining and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Yes, thank you all.